Anyway, we got winner bracket semi-final number two. Who's gonna face Soen in the winner bracket final? And who has to play Fortitude in the lower bracket? Bracket is not updated? Ah, there we go. I just had to refresh. Excuse me, Liquipedia people. 2-1 by Soen in the first game of the day. And now, same matchup, but two different players. It's again China versus Korea. Link Wagwa versus Chimiko. Haven't seen games of these two in quite some time, so I'm kind of curious what we will see. Yeah, in the WGL qualifiers, of course, we did see them. Chimiko especially played quite a bit in the pro qualifier as well. Didn't get that far, but uh, it's been a little while. Also, those tournaments. I asked Chimiko earlier today, by the way, just on a side note, about balance, and he said, well, I don't really think I am allowed to uh, utter a statement as I can only play one race. Wow. Yeah. Koreans and their amount of respect that they have. It's amazing. Well, he, can, he could say if it's easier or harder for him at the moment than it was before, right? What? Like, he could say if, like, on this patch, it's uh, harder for me to play against certain races, or yeah. if it's the same, or if it's better. I mean, that... He can just talk from his human perspective. Yeah. But I think some matchup is still being figured out, like, especially against the Archer style. Uh, we haven't seen the premium build yet from the humans, I feel. And also against Orc, it's still a little bit in the wind. All right, we try to start this game again. We had a little join buck. Remo, you ready? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes it takes a little while. Now we try this again. And I'm in. Remo is in. Linguagua is in. Admin number one is in. Tomiko is in as well. So this looks good. Pog. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chat with B dude. Uh, last evening. I go, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Pork, 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 pork. <laughs> I heard... Uh, I gotta watch the the drawing of the Dust League uh, they did tonight. I heard from Floss. Uh, big praise. Like, oh, this is great entertainment. This is great TV. Okay, I have to catch up on that one. Starting next week, Dust League is gonna be back on this very channel. So, we finally got it. We are allowed... To see the skills that is Linguagua. Once I got this tool fixed. But yeah, Remo, introduce us to the match. We have Human versus Orc, Chimiko versus Linguagua, China versus Korea on Concealed Hill. Our first map. Chimiko starting in the top right. Who was, uh, especially last year, seeing a lot of improvement in his play. And I know one person out there who would say, I imagine, just that about the Orc player, the young gun from China, Linguagua. Proving that he can't, oh, not only can he play well himself, but also has been commentating for the Gold League a little bit. And now he's going to try his luck here against Chimiko, starting off. With a farce here, that much had to be expected. Chimiko not surprising us yet. Although, since this is Chimiko, there absolutely is an option for non-standard play. I have seen every single first hero from Chimiko against Orc before, plus Fire Lord, <laughs> plus Beastmaster. I think that's it, though. Um, but here he's going to be going for the good old Archmage footies and going to be trying to level up before the Farseer and TC get out of control. Yeah, um, I agree. It's a standard build so far. Farseer by Linguagua, Archmage by Chimiko. And we start on Concealed Hill, of course. Uh, one slight part of the introduction was, of course, horribly wrong, Remo, because a guy like Linguagua doesn't need no luck. It's just pure skill. 
But of course, a couple of good items here and there. A player's uh, forces are under attack. Aren't the worst so he's not like yet. Ford Miner with 20% skill, 15% hard work, 35% mom Con sandwiches. Concentrated power of will. <laughs> oh, dude, that song was used in every single skill movie thingy in the midst of the 2000s. What? There was. There was, like, by the time that song came out, skill movies were already gone, weren't they? Nah. No, skill movies were, like, actually, um, like, Rise Again, and... Or was it Rise Against? Rise Against, right. And Linkin Park. That was skill movie. Yeah, well, Fort Minor wasn't too long after Linkin Park. I, I think well, they did it in the a beginning little... beginning of Fort Minor wasn't too long after the end of Linkin Park, but... Like, no, not not the end of Linkin Park. That was way later. I think it was I, after the second I, album. I don't think you have this chronology quite down. Though. We'll look it up in the break. Like skill movies, they like once YouTube could uh, render videos in high quality when everyone had better better connection. That's when skill movies died. But that doesn't mean there weren't some amazing ones out there because there certainly was. Certainly were. Still remember to this day. Counter-Strike skill movie called Morning Walls Collapse. Amazing. Was uh, towards the end of the era, by the way. And I'm sure everyone in chat still fondly remembers one or two skill movies of their own that they watched from Counter-Strike or Warcraft or... What else was there? Quake, maybe? Mm -hmm. Live to Fly. That's such a wonderful skill movie. Uh, yeah, we got a game, and this is looking way more standard than what we've seen in the first one. The orc is the aggressor, the human is in his own base. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, but isn't Jimmy playing this too passively? Like, this map is actually pretty good for creeping level 2. Just... Normally you should be able to get to the green quickly, but what Shimiko did here was he was only creeping the first camp with three militia So it took quite long, so I guess that's why he couldn't get over to the green after This heavy tier 2 tech speed greed by humans I'm not sure that this is the best call anymore like yeah, you get tier 2 faster but levels are also absolutely crucial and AM, you know, this is not a map where normally he's stuck on level 1. This is a map, usually, where the orc has to be concerned that the AM might be getting level 3. But that is not at all the case. So, I think this is a pretty good early for Guagua. Yep. Wolf chasing, Grunt's healing. This looks pretty fine, indeed. TC coming and Beastery Spirit Lodge standard build. It seems like Tomiko is just saving the turtle spot for the MK? Which is really weird. Of course the MK is the more important hero, but you need a high-level Archmage to support this. Unlike the Fasio, who is kind of ignorable at the later stages. But okay, now we look for tier 1 pressure. TC is out. Yep. With Stomp, that should be easily secure tier 2 buildings. I love the confidence also by Guagua. He realized, okay, this AM hasn't been doing anything for so long. I don't need to blindly follow him anymore. I know my base is safe anyway, especially with a TC coming. And I can squeeze in just a little bit of creeps. 80 experience here now on the Farseer. And now the TC is going to take creep priority. He is quite the creep, isn't he, with his big slingshot on his back? You think? I mean, who wears a slingshot on their back, dude? That's just weird. I think he wants to fit it in his back pocket like it's supposed to be, but the sling is just so big. Speaking of which, him being a creep, is he even wearing pants? <laughs> I'm not so sure. I if really it is, then it's like like shorts. Yeah, I really Very short shorts. I really don't like, like the skirt or something. I really don't like the septum he's wearing. I think that's kind of disgusting. But all right, little metalcore TC we got here. Is that the nose ring? Is that called septum? Yeah. You always find that disgusting. Off-putting. Yeah. Like the idea of shooting something through the wall of my nose is not the finest uh, thing I can think of. You know, I'm looking forward to the day. <laughs> when they introduce eye piercings. Dude! Oh, God! <laughs> A 
Once again, TC gets off to a very good start. Classic concealed hill game. Not pressured. AM with lower levels probably too weak. So the TC just gets natural. Merchant, boom, pick level 3. This keeps on happening over and over for orcs on this map. And if you can avoid level 3 AM, this is what makes this map pretty good for orc. Red camp though goes to Chimiko. Big drop for him. The medallion is honestly pretty damn good for MK. But it's not a big aura, so not the perfect drop. And this would be the perfect time now to engage into a fight, wouldn't it? Hells yeah, says Linguagua. Raiders coming in. Oh, misclick on the Stormbolt. He only got a Woofy. That's not good. Forced to TP out. Loses one Priest. Loses a bit of the rest of the camp. And Jamiko is in serious trouble this game. The player's forces are under attack. Are you still here? I don't know if you guys can hear me. Yeah, you can do this cast alone, it's fun. TZ with the Storm Lightning Shield. MK clap against it. Linguaga is going in very aggressively over here. Heal stroll committed. Militia coming out, trying to do their best. It's a battle of the second heroes with their mana pools once again. Oh my god, this MK has two mana potions. He's got all the potions in the world. Oh, Wagwa. Is he over committing across the map? Kind of feels like he is. Ooh, AM though dropping very low. Makes it back to the shop. Another potion. Shimiko head investing heavily into the drinks. Stormbolt almost onto the far seer. Guagua quick with a TP to get out. Gets a few more peasants, and that was a lot of losses on both sides, I think. A player's forces are under attack. But the expansion is coming up across the map. MK close to 4, it's gonna be a good level up for him. AM has aura too, right? Yeah. Alright, Lingua going back in though. TC also almost level 4. He's gonna get a priest, that is gonna be the level up. Lightning shield on top and no priests left to dispel. MK getting purged and focused. This is gonna cost the invul potion most likely. Oh, TC also dropping low. Speed scroll, disengage, kind of getting blocked by his own raider. But with a good ensnare, he buys the space and can fall back. And now we have the expo standing. Peon slide from the main. Wait, how do they already have gold? I guess he sent them in a little bit early. So, now with the expo standing. It seems like Guagua only has to hold one more push and then this game should be his. Falling back. The level 2 aura for the TC now. So nice. His army is so much faster than the humans. And standing up on the high ground also quite smart. I'm not sure if Shimiko has vision up there. Well, now he does. And everything here is quite hurt. Stomped to fall back. But not back to the shop. Hmm. Guagua is going for the counter-attack instead. Bold choice. You can go for a heal scroll and a TP at the shop. He certainly has the resources for it. Oh, no TP. Second invul and heal scroll. Is there TP on Shimiko? No, there is not. So this base trade does seem like a very smart idea. However, no TC for Guagua to get out should Shimiko... Uh, managed to get a TP of his own and TP back home. It's gonna take a while to kill this expo. Going for the borrow first. Takes quite some time. Gets it now, finally. That's level 4 MK. 
with that kill. But the keep's just falling. Oh, repair on the peasants doesn't work out so well against chain lightning and lightning shield. That's all peasants dead, and this might be the checkmate move over here. All right, TP now from Chimiko. Wagwa not reacting. He's just trying to right click it down. Oh man, but the peasants come back from the expansion, from the kill of the expansion, and now they're mass repairing. Oh my god. Wagwa gets the kill just barely, but he's stuck. He's stuck with everything. Oh my god. Expansion frame is still standing, by the way. Oh no. And he had the money for the TP earlier. But he didn't buy one. Perhaps he thought he did, but he really didn't. Oh my god, everything's dying. Yeah, this TC is gonna fall as well. But it's two base income versus zero base. Oh, wait, what? I was looking somewhere else, suddenly the TC slips out. Oh, that's definitely not the way Chimiko would have liked it. I guess he uh, didn't have enough units there in hold position. Whew. TC catching a lucky break. Speedy as he is with the auto makes it back to the fountain. Farseer again, looking for the buildings. Oh, TC in trouble one more time. He thought he was safe at the fountain. Invol. No way he makes it. Does he? Town is under MK should have this, right? Yeah. Okay. TC's dead. Farseer does have a TP this time. I'm not sure if he has pillage. Ah, it's finishing right now. Now he's got pillage. Shimiko still with a kind of, kind of, uh, a good army. It's not that big anymore, but, like, I guess the right units. But it's about buildings here. And speaking of buildings, by the way, there's no way for Shimiko to make new ones. Because he has zero peasants left. Oh, and the Zeppelin. That is very smart. I thought he was going to have to TP out, but I didn't. GG by Shimiko. Man, Guagua. Whew. When he was stuck in the base there, they almost felt like he was throwing that game away. But smart play. With the counter-attack, with the patience, realizing he didn't have to try to take a fight, could just go for the base. Strong game by the Chinese. Thank you, Vidu, with a two-month resub. Osterhasse with a 17 months. Uh, Remo Mocking Neo made me subscribe again. <laughs> Prime number EA says Osterhase and the crest fall with 100 bits. I mean, they're already... Yeah, we don't want to read that. Yeah. Sorry, Neo. I didn't think that was going to be so rough for you. Uh, that was uh, not the intention I had in mind. I don't know. We had the same topic like a couple of weeks ago and was already pretty bad and you do it again. I don't know. It's like super shitty thing to do. Anyway. Yeah, Linguago makes up for it. As expected. Go on to Northern Isles. Yeah, strong game by him. Chimiko trying to uh, tech so fast. Did come at a big price there for the mid game. Oh, wow. And we're starting already. <laughs> we have to catch up on something? Not really, right? And normally it takes like a, a few seconds, though. And now, bum, bum, bum. Looking to see who makes it through here in our second semi final. We have another Orc already waiting in the upper bracket final. That is Soen. Didn't expect an Orc Mirror and Yuma Mirror here, to be honest. But with Fortitude A, you never know. And the first series was tournament's head on map two, so things can still turn around real quick. You think Fortitude's gonna off race? Uh, no, but, like, the results, you never know. Uh, oh, okay. If he takes things super seriously and 
plays hardcore or uh, if he kind of throws games away. Yeah, that did seem very weird earlier. In the beginning of that series, for so strong. But sometimes players need that kick in the lower bracket, it seems, to get them back into top shape again and play serious. We'll see him there later. Either in a human mirror or again against Orc. What's what's up with the humans, man? Sock yesterday, lower bracket semi-final elimination. Today, fortitude losing to Soen, which is not really supposed to be that way. And now... Tamiko struggling as well. And we have a little bug joining that game, I guess. Takes forever. Very few Night Elves this tournament, by the way. Only two. It's kind of crazy. Normally, Night Elves always the overrepresented race. Yeah, no colorful, no moon. Maybe. It's too close to WGTL and everyone puts a lot of effort into practicing for that big team tournament and they kind of want some time off. I think like I think this is a topic we never really discussed. Like we don't have an off season in Warcraft at all. Like there's a big tournament, one week later there's another tier two tournament or something. Or the qualifiers start super quick. Uh yeah. Does Pro I thought about that also today, like, when you compare it to, like, MMA or something, there's, like, this one big fight, and they build up to it for months, mm -hmm. you know? And Warcraft is the opposite. We have matches all the time, and yeah, we have World Championships also in between, but also these players play against each other all the time on ladder, where you can see, see them streaming it, and also in other smaller tournaments and stuff. Takes a bit away from the epicness, I guess. Yeah, we had a little bit of an off-season a couple of years ago when... December was kind of vacation time, but then, uh, whoops, there's Gold League Finals now. And then in kind of January, uh, maybe Chinese New Year is a little bit of an off-season these days. But Well, then there's European tournaments, like this time with, was it, it was either, either Rising Star or Home Story Cup or something. Or it was Invitational. Something was in Chinese New Year, so... Thank you, Taker, for the raid and Metzelmatz. <laughs> Thank you for the sub. Patrick HB with the two months. Legis 2 with the six months. Thank you guys all very much. Yeah, like. What was my point again? When. I, I think like the European offseason would be Christmas, but. The Chinese don't celebrate that, so they have tournaments throughout Christmas. And we don't celebrate Chinese New Year, so there's always an overlap with the regions. Would be kind of nice to have. To be was it BREC last year that was on Christmas? Or yeah. was that before Christmas? It was like one day before Christmas or something. And then was Gold League. Like that, that, There was a lot of action around. Christmas. Talking about Christmas, I get reminded of uh, the Christmas album of Mahalia Jackson. Great album. She's like uh, one of those Southern American or, you know, Southern US uh, soul singers. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. beautiful. Okay. We've got a Farsia versus Archmage match once again. Can Lingwaga pressure him into his own base again? Northern Isles kind of a good map for that. Poik, poik, poik. Thank you for the 300 bits. Yeah, normally this is the map where what we saw on the first, that's kind of what we can expect. AM creeping level 1, but not level 2, getting pressured, unable to get the aura, feels bad. And this map is kind of understandable because it is so hard to even get level 2 and the Farseer can make it across quickly to harass. But why did Shimiko expose himself to that in the early on the first map? Well, the answer is obviously the fast tech, but... I really doubt that that's worth it. But he's gonna try it again here. Fast tech by Chimiko with only few militia called for the first camp. And with that, he is almost on par with the Orc tier 2. 
This seems to go a little easier for him as Linguagua is moving away from the base into the Murloc camps. Taking that away can be nice or can be punished. Nope, won't. Jimiko moving to the left, not into the middle. He's trying to get the bigger green? Or what's he doing? Yeah, creeping this camp away is amazing for the orc because now you know your opponent is not going to have... We're going to have much harder of a time getting level 2 then. We'll check out the main, but the militia are in the tower also soon. We'll be able to defend this. And all right, something going Chimiko's way. Finally, he has managed to shake the tail of his opponent and hopefully can get level three. Oh, stealing the Tuskars would be great, but it's not a very easy camp to creep. Had so much time already where he effectively did nothing. Still on level one. Oh, if he scouts this. Will the Fazia stop at the green? I guess he will. Oh, if he checks that replay, that could have been a great creep check. Level 2 Archmage now. Still some time, but he's left alone. Could you creep the Scorpions with three footies and an AM? It's kind of the wrong. same strength of the camp like the Tuskars. At least it feels like that. But well, now with the AM did get level 2, get a successful steal. Footy's all still high health. Good creep here by Chimiko. And that's Scroll of the Beast. Four rifles can be glorious. Get a TC once again. T2 tech finishes for Chimiko as well. And it is rifles, of course. Are under kind of interesting how... This is... L the, the meta is settling a little, I guess, on we go rifles again, no matter what. Did we see Infi in WGTL? Was he playing against Orc? In the regular season, but that's long ago. Yeah. Yeah, Rifles still have the issue that the longer the game goes, the stronger the TC becomes against them. Whereas with the Breakers, it's the other way around. But Rifles have the big benefit of being able to creep much more easily. Especially on this map, the MK... Creep route can be very strong on tier 2. Going the Tuskar camp into the lab is a very easy way to level 3. With some militia support, of course. And the MK is going to be coming out here in just a second. Looks though like Chimiko wants to go for the natural here first. And the Farseer, having gotten level 2. Chain Lightning, Lasted Seals have to be respected. Creeping with the TC at the same time, undisturbed at all, so yeah, quite some slow mid-game so far, again, sacrificing XP on the fast here, and where to go now? Chimiko is kind of exposed, counters around with the wolves immediately, so this won't lead to a TP, probably, oh, Cloak of Shadows, nice. Stealing some more time, putting some more pressure on this Archmage, still half a level away from three. Again, Chimiko loses all momentum here in the creep game. Too much damage onto him, the Farseer is super effective, but the TC just left completely to his own devices. Creeps now, the natural, that will be level 2 for him, Peon coming out, expansion soon, but the Farseer... Oh! Does get sniped! I wasn't expecting to see that, saw it too late. Yeah, that was and greedy, just... he thought summoning the wolves and doing the counters around is enough, but... Yeah, stumble in a couple of right clicks, man. That can hurt. All right, that's how you regain momentum right there. Big item as well to follow. Great sequence of events. Lionhorn of Stormwind, always good. TC's close to three, though. Certainly much closer than the MK is. Farseer won't be too far off. But the expansion is coming. As always, this is part of the orc game plan against human with the Farseer TC. So the question now lies with Jimiko. Will he push this or will he counter expand? Got the first hit scroll from the shop. Stop. Oh, with a purge? That might be a surround. 
Nice Stonebolt to prevent the Raider from closing that surround. Not getting the block. No, kind of a good. rare thing to say about Chimiko. Good sidestep for the Raider who dies in the end anyway, but can postpone the big fight as there is an expansion coming up. 50%. Water Elemental sees this. But Farseer is back. Does he want to fight now? It's an overwhelming mass for Chimiko. Decent storm. Threatening us around, but he doesn't have the force to do that. One more storm bolt. Ready now. Leads to another kill for sure. Oh my god. How oh, that one hero kill just turned everything around. TC had a big level lead, or at least a big experience lead on the MK. And now, level 3 MK instead. Barely any shaman left as well. And that should be an easy expo cancel here for this yeah. human. Even with peasants, we'll build a shop and an arcane very, very soon. We'll both help a ton. Didn't have the resources for a power build on both, I guess. But yeah, that's the easiest cancel. And now what, Lingwagua? Rifles upgrades coming. Chimiko staying on 50, adding some sorks. A player's force There's a lot to dispel now. Hey, sorks, good idea, I guess. No breakers, though. With the TC being only two. Oh, nice Stormbolt to dodge the Storm and Book of the Dead. And that's another retreat for Linguago. Man, Shimiko can now do whatever he wants. What is the best thing to do? Like, claiming red camps normally is always great. But they're kind of far away. But yeah, with this book, he's certainly pretty strong here still. Rough position for Guagua. I think he has to become imaginative now. It's going to be extremely hard to take any kind of fight anytime soon. And that is oftentimes where the orcs start making use of zeppelins. Run by, speed scrolls, drops. Pillage. Is opening oh, another measure. base, so that can be an opening to run by for sure with the speed scroll and aura. TC is still not level 3 though, needs a couple of passing kills. Good that he has reinforced defenses, so if there's a base trait, he will hold on a little longer. And with lightning shield and everything, there is good AoE, attack. but in this now, and he moves back. Looks a little indecisive, but maybe he underestimated that force and wants to hold. Now the base race turned out great in the last game. Wouldn't be the case here. Loses another grunt for free. TC in this okay. Hits oh decent, I would say. Scroll of the beast. He was saving that. For a moment like this, clap in the back, there's no damage except the lightning shield of the TC. Kodo soaking up a lot of that damage, but is now gone. That's the aura as well. One more stomp and lightning shield combo. It's not even trying to go for a hero kill, really. And that's just an overwhelming human force. Nice split there as well by Chimiko playing this well. Another TC out of mana. Not nearly as scary anymore. We have the expo for Chimiko in the back. MK is around, doesn't really do anything. Army too small, no damage anymore. GG. And 1-1. One, one. Again? We go full distance in the series. Winner of the first map, losing momentum once more with a pretty big mistake. Kind of the same as in Fortitude versus Soen. Not that drastically, but. Yeah. Jamiko fights back. Felt like everything was going Linguagua's way, and then this one hero loss. Of course, losing your first hero is a big deal. But he was only level 2. Um, felt like it shouldn't be that bad. But it was. So now, third map. Is the third map again going to be Terranus like earlier? Nope. Unlikely. Echo. Yeah, Echo Isles. The much more normal choice occurrence. And this is where Fortitude earlier played so extremely well. But we thought he was going to be storming to a 2-0 victory quickly. But uh, Soen did not allow for this. Who is going to be meeting Soen? Who is going to win the third map? Let's see if we can start the game without any complications. Looks like it so far. 
Slowly but steady, the lobby is getting filled. And we move in to match number three. When was the last time Chimiko was really successful in a tournament? CC Masters 2 or something? Yeah, there we made it to the semifinals and lost to Fly. But yeah, from all the good human performances at WGL, uh, we kind of missed the next step. Whether it be Sock or Chimiko or Soin or even Hawk. But he absolutely has the potential. Has shown plenty of times before how strong he can play in there as well. You know, fell behind in the early game. Gets one gift of the Farseer. That was, of course, a juicy hero kill. And then played it very well from there. And we might be getting the Soin Chimiko match after all if Chimiko wins here. And as I said earlier, those games have always provided some crazy games. Especially on a map like this, like even dating back to the MTW Legendary Cup qualifiers. It's kind of rare that you remember qualifier f semi final matches. Oh, yeah, that's how good it was. Farseer again. Skip barracks. Skip chop. Ultra aggression, probably. I bet Chimiko three times the standard. Not going away from it, no Paladin, no Blood Mage, no MK opening. Also, it feels like we didn't praise his blocks like once in this series. Weirdo day. Yeah, true. Wolf lol, thank you for the three month resub. I would love to know what happened to this Pally Fast Expo strat that he was playing against Orc for a while. Do you remember that? Pally, Last Refuge, I saw it twice against Orc, and it looked so good. It looked like the Orc could do nothing against it, but I guess someone must have found some kind of counter Players because I haven't seen it in many moons now. Shadow Priest steal oh, by Linguagua. Yeah. Sweet against the Water Elemental. That's a really cool addition. That justifies skipping the shop because he got healing and dispel. And some damage as well. And Chimiko has no idea. So he's gonna have two abolishes against the water metal. Probably gonna spread them out. Tech speed is still pretty far ahead for Guagua as he skipped the barracks. Alright, here we go. First abolish coming in. Hold does not hold on to the second. Okay. He's a lot of pressure on this AM. Scout Tower into Blacksmith. We saw this before. Not Scout Tower upgraded right away, but Scout Tower, Blacksmith, and then Arcane. Not very expensive, of course. Stuck on only three footies here for quite a while. With this build. And I guess after that, he's going straight into rifles? No. A few more footies. Wants to have a bit more beef in the front line. Militia called. It's a little low on lumber now. And once you two is done, we'll probably go into the middle again to have that fight between TC and Mountain King. So far, the defense is pretty good. But again, level 2, heavily delayed. He's very conservative with the Water Elemental, so the Shadow Priest can't really dispel anything. But on the other side, it's not enough damage to kill any farms or break the space or something. Grunt's coming now. Tier 2 almost done. This is where things get interesting. No war mill this time. Is it still going to be a bestiary? We're certainly going to see a lot. That much we know. Lodge coming. Has the resources for the bestiary as well. Oh, Chimiko a little supply blocked. Oh, not quite yet, but he realizes he needs this farm ASAP for when the MK comes, which is going to be in a moment. More lumber, though. Will probably delay this spell upgrade a little bit. TC already in the works. MK coming. Once again, bestiary and... 
large. And it is the 12 o'clock. Once again going to, to the Orc this time. Pretty much uncontested. It's gonna be a nice item right there. Seems like I got another disconnect. Ensnare on the ground. When Ensnare on the water elemental as well. This should be a save, maybe. Oh no, nice block. Okay, yeah, finally we can say it. Took us three games. So that's a grunt kill in the early mid game. It's not really great. Slows down the TC for sure. And this is very limited forces that Shimiko had. Like three footmen, one archmage. And that's it. And he's still able to contest this. Oh, experience maybe? Nope, denied. So TC starts to creep with aura first. Grunt and Shadow attack. Priest and Snare coming now. Big emphasis on raiders. Pretty much the entire day already. Now the Mountain King comes in. This should be the sign of retreat for the Farseer, who has no chain lightning, so he can't really steal too much. And of course, we all know what happened on Northern Isles. So another storm bolts around. Yeah, that's uh, something you want to avoid for sure. Everything kind of hurt for Chimiko. I think he has to fall back soon. This is some time for Linguagua at least. And we got Shaman and Ensnare is ready. And the TC gets more creeping. Oh, he is playing brave with this fast year for now. Gets a footman kill. There could be more if Chimiko's continuing to play like this. Priests are coming. 140 saves into the back. Goes for the 6 o'clock. That's very obvious. And the Farseer is on his heels anyway, so he definitely knows. I feel like this is kind of greedy. All right. It's going to be daytime soon as well. Two more Warcraft hours. And then Heal Scroll and it will become available. Very big deal. Farseer, if he steps in a little bit too far, might be getting Stone Bolt surrounded, but... Niguaga is doing it well, playing at max range pretty much. Not doing, giving too easy of an opening. And kills off more footies here as well. Chimiko, this creep cam is turning out harder for him than he was expecting. Yeah, and three footmen died here already. Mountain King will maybe get level two. Needs another Stormbolt to prevent the Zah... Oh, Chain Lightning. Oh, TC comes in with level two now. He has Storm. Chimiko gets the Sentry Ward though. That's pretty nice. And the retreat was at the right time. All he can get is the experience of a water metal. Oh, wait a minute. Raider comes in. Slows down the retreat. And that's the opportunity for Linguagua to punch this rifleman exposed. Same goes for the Mountain King who doesn't have clap yet. Stormbolt to take out the Raider. And there's level two. Okay, there we go with the clap. The stomp a little too late, but he got to surround the wolf. Closes it. And that, no way. Ah, Perch is there. MK dead. Yeah, that was a little too greedy, my Korean friend. Can Linguaga clean this now? We do have Militia already. We're waiting for the Lightning Shield. He has the Adept and more Storms. Archmage has a TP, so he's going for the rest of the army, trying to take out some Priests, gather up an experience. Oh, boy. Is he trying to get a surround against his AM here? <laughs> it feels like it, but this AM is just getting another kill. Rifle numbers uh, rise. Dispel pretty quickly. Maybe an overextension by Linguagua. Feels like he could have used his damage a little better. Felt a little greedy trying to get the TP level 3. Okay, if you're so close to level 3, maybe that's understandable. Lot of hurt units saved to the back, so it's time to lick his wounds. But the scroll goes to the Chinese. Yeah, and also the animal, yeah, picks it up. So important Players on Equiles. Only one yeah. shop here, shop control, crucial. And it's much easier most of the time at least, for the human to lose map control, and with that, the shop, and that happened right here. And the last fight already wasn't good. And the next one, the opponent's gonna have a heal scroll and an impul, while you don't have one. And to make matters worse even more, the expansion's almost up. This game for Guagua is looking quite nice. However, Chimiko, still with more than 40 supply here, Going quite early into Sorks. Three priests into Sorks. Rifle numbers at three. Not the highest. He doesn't have much card control with his Mountain King being benched so long. No level two anything. Should be full map control for Linguagua and buying time. 
lightning shield. Not going against it. There was some damage. But Lingwagua knows exactly what's up. That's a free Sorg. Casting one slow. All right. How good are the storms? How do you fully engage? There is mercenaries. Pochamiko if he wants to. Oh, Inward Potion committed early. Is he just going for the Dwarf again? He can't afford to. As there is no invul, no heal potion, MK is definitely exposed, trying to go for this round, doesn't quite get it, but there should be more purge, I believe. Yep, TP transferred, MK survives, well done by Chimiko, but that's a TP gone, that's also scary. They have to rebuy it, that's expensive. Uh, you don't want to cross the entire map to push the expansion when you don't have one. That takes away from army and that's exactly what Chimiko is doing? No. Just heal potion, mana potion, no TP. Kinda dangerous. TC still holding on to the heal scroll. Farsia makes it to the shop again. 500 gold. That should be the next round of items for the orc. Is he gonna go for a counterattack again? Well, he calls militia and he has like 50 supply. Definitely looks like it. Invul goes to Linguagua. Next heal scroll is only available in 20 seconds. And he put. Oh, militia. This is very indecisive. Militia called, then moved back. Oh, then called again. Yeah. I think you realized that Quagga was going for the counterattack again. And for that, perhaps he wants to have some militia at home, but are militia really good enough? I'm not so sure. Not a single stomp, but a lot of lightning. Oh my god, the economy is suffering. Let it die. Ooh. So many peasant kills. Sick AoE by Linguaga, just slaughtering these working men. And it feels like CH all over again as we are going for the keep. Yeah, pretty much a carbon copy of that game. Linguaga realized he doesn't have to take the fight. He can just go for the building and I guess the economy also. Chimiko did get a TP. Trying to take out the Great Hall. Oh my God, the damage might not be enough though. It's not enough. Great Hall survives in the meantime. TP out also by the Orc by Guagua. Keep survives, but only two peasants left. Zero gold for Chimiko. Yeah, 1,300 on the side of Ling Guagua. This, is, look, this looks like a very one-sided affair from now on. Will he throw everything into the... or against the main base? This, look, this doesn't look too good at all. Looks like we get our mirror matches in the second round of this group. Also, this human army at this point, not that big anymore. Perhaps this is time to engage. Invis on the MK and okay, Guagua doesn't want to take a fight. Of course, no need for him. Oh, Mystic on the Stormbolt again. Use it on the Wolf, whoops. Is he close to a level up? No, not really. Speed scroll disengaging. And repairing this, Chimiko sending a water elemental, but that doesn't last too long, so not even a single peon kill, probably. Chimiko has good vision, so he knows exactly what's up and can do good judgment. Peasants are slowly returning. Okay, he wants that fight. MK could have a massive clap in here. A little bit of a sandwich. With the MK on the right hand side, rest of the army on the left hand side, but not going for it. Just prevents Linguagua from base raiding again. When's he gonna reveal himself? Right now! Going for the Farseer, but he is protected by the TP. And now the MK, quite far forward, closes the round on the second hero. Oh, but against Clap, that's also dangerous. There's a mana potion. Oh, uses both consumables. Okay, Invis. <laughs> no reveal. Claps his way out of invisibility. But that's the retreat for Linguagua, who has zero lumber, by the way. Chimiko is holding on nicely. Plays around the situation nicely. Rebuilds his economy. And will soon be back at 50. Chimiko is playing this very well from behind. If he wins this game, that's kind of crazy. A player's forces are under attack. Linguagua's... Still far off from that, though. Linguagua scouting for another expansion, which, uh, yeah, Tomiko cannot afford at all. Close to level four. That will probably be 
Uh, Blizzard against Raiders, not too sure. But would be a typical Tamiko build to go for 1 2 1. Still a thousand gold. For that one. Not wanting to go to the shop again to spend his gold. No backpack for mana potions, that would be a great addition, I think. Oh, yeah. We saw it yesterday, didn't we? Finally a backpack from Orc, but still Spiral, man. rare. Everything's very hurt now. He seems gross. That's a little unnecessary. He fell into that trap of constant brawling by Chimiko, not making use of his map control. Except this expansion, of course, which will pay off. Now splitting the Farseer away, I like that. Yeah, that's smart. Again, going for the run by into the Please base. Farseer is going to get items at the shop, probably a Tele Staff as well. Oh, no, just double heal scroll invul, which are, of course, very good. Chimiko seals off the base again with a new farm, but again, the farm is not finished. This time, there is no shaman at all in this little run by, so no lightning shield. We add a witch doctor against the invisible mountain king. I like that. Yeah, raiders not in this, really. No chain lightning. That is a decent repair. We have a TP, right? Yeah, we do. And three heal scrolls falling walk off. And it is Blizzard. That's a lot of peons dying. Are we really going for the space race again? Without a raider? Feels like it doesn't do too much. But another shaman are back in, and that means a lightning shield against these peasants. The base is breached, the peasants again exposed. Shimiko, he has to TP, doesn't he? But if he TPs, the expansion again survives. Yeah, he wants this expansion so bad, but there's very limited damage. Okay. Uses the staff. To trigger the TP. And he fell for it. Yep. Wagwa fell for it. Yep. And so he cancels the staff again. Still has that TP. Ooh, needs to rush over. There's no repair. Mountain King will say hello with the clap to slow things down. And that is a killed Great Hall. That was definitely a big error here by Guagua. Not realizing this is the Tele Staff. Can of course happen in the heat of battle. But if he had just right clicked down this keep, this probably would have been the same checkmate that we saw earlier. But now we're back to one base versus one. So, big supply lead. Levels are looking good for Linguagua as well. Items are looking fantastic. We wait, do have the Witch Doctor now for Sentry Wards too. It's not that this was the game winning moment for Chimiko, it was just a good moment. Yeah, keeps him in the game. MK5 will of course be scroll. a dream, so he sends the Archmage away. But yeah, here we go again. Chain Lightning, and this might be the last of the peasants. This time it should be the real TP. Yes, it is. Again, making use of the level 2 aura. The endurance makes this army very speedy. Can again move across the map, threaten counterattacks, and the peon. At the natural, ready for the next great hall. There it is. A player's forces are under attack. A little bit more creeping now for the TC. Not very close to a level up, but it's uh, a little bit of something. Another invul, I guess. No, waiting for the heal scroll. Oh my! Isn't that overkill? <laughs> Four heal scrolls? Not at all. <laughs> Well, I guess he has a good answer to clap now. Yep. There's no mana potion on this MK. Can't really afford it. Which gold is left? 4,000, okay. A player's forces are under attack. Oh, we'll watch it level four. Level two wolves now to continue the pressure into the main. Tough game for Jimiko. Super tanky TC close to five. Yeah, very close to five. Invo potion on the Mountain King. He like if Jimiko wins this, the attack. Mountain King will play the biggest part in that for sure. 
but the question is how. Yeah, this is a 60 supply orc army with not three, but four heal scrolls. It's probably the most I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen five heal scrolls on one player. Wolves don't quite breach the main. Again, the wall was closed Players with the farm. Next turtle spot. Fortunately, for no TP. Exposes himself quite a bit. The Great Hall is about to be ready again. Do the gold difference. <laughs> 2,700. Oh my god. Invis potion on the TC now, okay. Going for the kill. Tamiko realizes MK5 is maybe part of a possible solution. A lot of vagueness in that statement because he is playing far back. TC sees this. <laughs> They're both Invis. <laughs> He's blocking the other. <laughs> oh my god, that stomp though! It's the whole army! Oh my god. And the rest is coming in with a speed scroll. AM too far forward. He's in trouble. No hidden wall pot anymore for him. Only on the MK. Heal scroll comes in. The first of many. And the backline of Chimiko is looking dire. Stomp. Lightning shield. Everything is falling. MK is trying with his own clap. But that's not good enough. TC5. And that's everything going down. Zap over the top. And everything's dead. GG. And 2-1 for Guagua. Link Wagon continues his good uh, summer season, late late spring, early summer season, and advances into the winner bracket final, where he will meet an orc brother in Soen. Fortitude versus Chimiko, a human mirror in the lower bracket semifinal. Do we know the order of games, actually? Because I don't really. So according to Wikipedia, it was upper bracket first yesterday. All right. Um, so uh, should be Orc Mirror, I guess. And it is Orc Mirror indeed, continuing to see the glory that is Lin Guagua. And the human fans will have something later in the lower bracket. We, of course, will broadcast all the games here and then switch into the ESL Cup. We did the early rounds there, uh, but we'll bring you the decision, of course. Long day of Warcraft ahead, so we go into a little break and we'll see each other with the rest of Group B. Which looks like, okay, we'll still take some time to update, but you know, Linguagua won. So in Linguagua up, then Fortitude versus Chimiko, and then the lower bracket final. See you in a bit.